Little Britches. Father and I were ranchers. Chapter 25, Part 2. It was a fine evening. Mother popped corn and let all of us but Hal stay up until 10 o'clock. I told them all about the mountain ranch and the dogskin water bag and the chuck wagon. But I didn't say anything about sky high or the bucking. Father was awfully quiet even for him, and I could tell he knew I was holding something back. I think I would have told him all about it if we had been somewhere alone, but I couldn't tell him with Mother and the others there. Whenever I wasn't talking, I kept feeling guilty, so I told him all about dragging in wood for Juan's fire and about High having his roan trained so he'd handle any kind of mean animal without any reining. I said High was going to teach me how to train a horse that way. Father just said that would be a good thing to learn and that a man who could train a horse like High's blue roan would be able to teach me lots of worthwhile things about forethought and patience as well as horse handling. Sunday morning, I let Grace ride Topsy up to the corner and back on my saddle. Father went along on Lady because Topsy was a strange horse and he wouldn't trust Grace alone with her. Grace didn't like to have him go with her. I think she always did wish she had been a boy so she could have been allowed to do the things Father let me do. We packed a picnic lunch and spent the whole afternoon down by Bear Creek, but we stayed away from the bridge where Fanny got hurt. Mother had a new book that they bought when she and Father went to Denver to hear Mr. William Jennings Bryan make a speech. It was the call of the wild, and Mother read to us most of the afternoon. I think I liked that book better than any one she'd read. While she was reading, Father and I whittled the sailboat. That is, father whittled the boat part, and I made the mask and split dry Spanish dagger leaves for the sails. Then father rigged the sails and booms with string he'd brought in his pocket. He fixed two long strings to the main boom so we could swing it from one side of the boat to the other as we walked along the bank. While mother and the others were getting supper fixed, father and I sailed the boat down the creek at a place where the current wasn't too swift and where there was a pretty good breeze, we sat down on the bank and Father showed me how he could make the boat go either up or downstream by simply changing the angle of the sail. After I'd learned how to do it and was moving the strings so to make the boat tack up against the breeze, Father said, You know, a man's life is a lot like a boat. If he keeps his sail set right, it doesn't make too much difference which way the wind blows or which way the current flows. If he knows where he wants to go and keeps his sail trimmed carefully, he'll come into the right port. But if he forgets to watch his sail till the current catches him broadside, he's pretty apt to smash up on the rocks. After a little while, he said, I have an idea you'll find that the current's a bit strong up at the mountain ranch. Just then, Mother hoo-hooed for us, so we took the boat out of the water and went back up the creek. While we were walking, Father fastened the strings so the sail couldn't move and tied the long cord onto the bowsprit. When we got to where Mother had supper laid out on the bank, he gave the boat to Philip. We left the creek just when the sun started to dip down over the highest mountain peaks so I could get back to Cooper's before dark. When I went, Father walked out to the gate beside Topsy. He had his hand on my knee and was looking down at the ground, but he said, Son, I want you to be a man and do the things men do, but I want you to be a good man. I'm not going to worry about you, but don't take foolish risks, and give the man who's paying you a good day's work. So long, partner. Then he waved to me as he closed the gate. And we'll read chapter 26 next time. Till then, as Tigger says, ta-ta for now. Thanks so much for listening. I love you guys. Bye-bye.